right, so we are going to multiply x plus 6 times x plus 4. So do you remember how to do that? So can we actually FOIL without doing the intermediate step, meaning the outer and the inner? Can you hold that in your brain and then add it together? You're like that? Okay, so remember, first is x times x, so I get x squared. This is what I mean by hold it kind of the outer you give you a 4x, yes, and the inner gives you a 6x, so then I write a 10x down, and then last I get 24. So is everybody at that stage where they can do that? Yeah, okay, that's where you should be. That's what I was hoping. Okay, so can you think of two other numbers that could go in the spaces to get the last term, the constant term of 24? So who thinks they can come up with um, two terms that would give you that? Yeah? 2 and 12. Okay. Okay, so now we're, oh, 8 and 3, sure. And the other one? Yes, 1 and 24. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to multiply it out and see what we get. So, again, try to do it where you hold the middle term. And so x times x, of course, we get x squared. Outer gives me 12x. Inner gives me 2x. So what would I write down? 14x. And last gives me 24. Okay, we're going to do the next one. x times x, of course, is x squared. Outer gives me 3x. Inner gives me 8x. So I write 11x down plus 24. Same with this one. x times x is x squared. Outer gives me 24x. Inner gives me 1x. So that makes me write 25x. And then last, of course, is 24. So no, now notice that the first and the last terms are the same, but the middle num term is different. So how do you think that affects the two numbers that you chose? If, if you compare all of these, how did the two numbers that you chose affect the middle numbers, sir? Yeah, yeah. So what's going to happen now if I change the signs of um, instead of x plus 6 times x plus 4 to x minus 6 times x minus 4? What do you think is going to happen there? Am I still going to get a positive 24 here? Yeah, because a negative times a negative gives me a positive. Now, what do you think is going to happen for my middle term? Yeah, we're still going to add them together, but when we're adding two negatives together, what do we get? A bigger negative, right? Okay, so let's try it. So x times x is x squared. Outer gives me minus 4x. Inner gives me, so what do I write down? Minus 10x and then plus 24. So it's the same as before, except now my middle term, instead of plus 10x, it's a minus 10x. So can you think of two no other numbers that will give me a constant term of 24? So we could try the same ones if you want. What was that? Minus 2 and 12. Then I had 8 and 3 and 1 and 24. Okay, so let's see if what, what happens when we FOIL it. Can you predict it? First I get x squared. Outer I get minus 12x. Inner I get minus 2x. So I get minus 14x. And then last I get plus 24. So same thing here. Now can you even go faster in your multiplying because you know what's going to happen here. Yeah. yeah, you turn those in. So you get minus 11x plus 24 and then x squared minus 25x plus 24. So again, the only difference here is you're adding up two negatives. Now, how is this going to change if I switch? Uh, oh, I guess now we're going to try this. OK, so, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go backwards. This is what I got. Can you figure out what I multiplied? So, we have to get two numbers that multiply to get 6. But do you see the middle term has to add up to 5? Yeah. 
I heard three and two. Are they correct? Let's do a quick check. X squared, 2x, 3x make 5x, and then 6. Do you see how fast this goes now? Yeah. Okay. How about, let's do number 2 first before we go to number 3. How about that one? So I heard 4 and 3. I would agree 4 and 3 adds up to 7, but it doesn't multiply to be 6. 1 and 6 I hear. Let's see. 6 I get for the constant here, and then 6x and 1x make the 7x. Very good. Okay, so this is a lot of like, you got to see it almost. Okay, how about this one? Yeah, 3 and 2. And the difference between 1 and 3 is because I have the sum being a minus 5x, you see I have to switch those signs there so that I can match the sum of the middle term. Okay, how about this one? Yeah, it's, it's again 1 and 6 again. Do you see? I'll get positive 6, but the difference here is the middle term is a minus 7. Okay? So let's go to number 5 now. Let's go to number 5. Can you think of 2? I hear 3 and 4, so let's check. And so now when we say 3 and 4, I want you to tell me it's x plus 3, x plus 4, because we're going to have different signs coming up in a second. So x plus 3, x plus 4. So let's check by FOIL. You don't have to, have to show the FOIL, but you can. Um, again, x times x is x squared. Outer gives me 4x. Inner gives me 3x is 7x. Last gives me the 12. So again, on your quiz or your test, you could just quickly multiply, and you should get... Um, the answer that you started with, right? Okay, so how is this one going to change from number 5 to number 7? Yeah. X minus 3, X minus 4. So let's check. X squared, outer gives me minus 4X, inner gives me minus 3X, and then last gives me the plus 12. Okay, how about number 6? I'm sorry? 2 and 6, so x plus 2, x plus 6. By the way, when you do this for homework and the answers are in reverse order, meaning x plus 6 times x plus 2, it's exactly the same, right? Because multiplication has that nice little um, property where it doesn't matter which order. Yeah, so. Anyways, let's check. x squared, outer is 6x, inner is 2x, so that gives me 8x, and then last gives me plus 12. So how is number 8 going to change then? Yeah, they're both going to be negative. So we've kind of done the easier ones, right? What happens if one of the factors is positive and one is negative? This is where it gets complicated. So for instance, if we were to try multiplying x minus 2 times x plus 6, right? The same method kind of goes the same. The x squared we get. Now outer we get what? 6x, inner I get minus 2x, so what do we get as our middle term? Yes, plus 4x, and then last I get minus 12. Okay, so let's look at the last term. Do you see what happens now? My last term is negative, which means they have to be opposite signs. Because remember the integer rules of positive times a negative or a negative times a positive? They have to be like that for me to get a constant term as negative, right? And then, do you see, the, the outer and the inner are still adding up to that middle term. It's just sometimes now you're going to have different signs, so you have to use your integer rules to get that. Okay, so now let's try x plus 2 times x minus 6. So how is that going to change what this looks like? So first I get x squared, outer I get minus 6x, inner I get plus 2x, so what's minus 6x plus 2x? Minus 4x, and then positive 2 times minus 6 gives me minus 12. So do you see it's exactly the same, but this time the middle term is negative. So what made the middle term negative versus positive here? Sorry? Yeah, we had more negatives when we added them up, and here we had more positives, right? So do you see why the middle term changed? 
Okay, so now think about that when you're trying to do the factors. Now we're going to go backwards. So we have to come up with factors for this. So the two constants have to multiply to 12, but then we have to get the middle term to be minus 4. So what would that be? Oh, that looks like the same as what I just had there, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is not so hard, is it? So <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but anyways. I think that's what I was doing all along. So again, you get the first gives me the x squared. And then in order to get a minus 12 and a, a minus 4, we have to think of two factors of 12 that add up to minus 4. It's pretty easy when it's right ahead of you. It gets harder when we're um, trying to figure out um, just blindly what it is. So anyways, everybody see 2 times 6 is 12. But how am I going to get negative with a negative sum? Which one has to be the negative one? The 6 has to be the negative, right? Versus here, if I do the x and the x and the 2 and the 6, which one has to be uh, negative this time? The 2, because you want less of the negative. Okay, moving on. Okay. So, does everybody see when I have a negative constant, that means we have to have alternating signs? Does that make sense to you? That's the only way I can get a negative. Now, we have to figure out now factors of 5 that add up to negative 4. Can you think of it? I'm sorry? Well, there's only so many factors of 5. 1 and 5, that's it. <laughs> right? So what would I have to place in the negative spot in order to get negative 4? The 1 or the 5? The 5. You see? Because then I get minus 5x plus 1x to get the minus 4x, right? Okay. Let's try. Okay, this is the same thing now, except this time it's plus 4x. So what would have to be in the negative spot? The 1. So let's check. First is x squared. Outer is 5x. Inner is minus x. That's the 4x. And then last gives me the minus 5. Okay, let's try this now. Factors are 14. So sometimes what I do is I go through the factors of 14. And I always start at 1. And I go 1 and 14, 2 and 7, and that's all there is, right? So then I have it like right there to play around with to get the minus 5. So what would it have to be? has to be 7 and 2. And which one has to be negative? The 7. Yeah. Does everybody see? I multiply that out. I get minus 7x plus 2x, which gives me the negative 5x. And again, they're opposite signs. Minus 7 and positive 2 gives me the minus 14. Okay. So same thing again. Obviously, it has to be 2 and 7 again. But which one has to be the negative? The 2. Yes? Okay, number five. So again, I might go, okay, so I have 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, and 4 doesn't work, 5 and 6. Do you see, I have now written all the factors of 30 right there. Because you have it written down there, it's easier to find the middle term, right? Does that make sense to you? Okay. So, which one would it have to be? Does everybody see it has to be 3 and 10? Because that's the only way you could add or subtract and get 7 out of that, right? Okay, so now we place it. We have the x and the x. And if you want, you can put 3 and 10 down. You just have to now figure out which sign goes where. So which one has to be negative? The 10 has to be negative. This has to be positive. Again, check by using FOIL. So x squared, 10x, sorry, minus 10x plus 3x is minus 7x, last is minus 30. So now if I change this around, again, the only way I could get 7 is having, like, this would be either 29 or 31, this would be 17 or 13, you see? This would be 11 or 1. The only way I can get 7 out of this is the 3 and the 10. So again, I put the, t the 3 and the 10 there. 
And now I'll play around with the signs. Which one has to be uh, negative this time? The 3. So this would have to be plus. Yes? Okay. So again, I'm going to write down my factors of 20. 1 and 20, 2 and 10. Notice I'm going in order. I'm just not like randomly picking factors. I'm starting with 1, then I'm going with 2, and then when I get to the middle, I know I'm done. So does 3 go into it? Then I go 4 and 5. Do you see? So what's the only one it could be? No. See, my middle term is, is 1. The difference between the numbers have to be either a sum or a difference of 1. The only one that could be is a 4 and a 5. Okay, so again, 1 and 20, the, the things if you have opposite signs, that you either get 20, 1, or 19. This would be 12 or 8, and this would be 1 or 9. We have a 1. So, place it, put a 4 and a 5. Which one has to be negative? Yeah, the 4 has to be negative. Let's check our answer. x squared plus 5x minus 4x is the plus 1x, and then last is the minus 20. So how is that going to change on this one? It's going to be the opposite. So this is going to be plus 4 minus 5. So again, let's check to see. Um, we have a minus 5x plus 4x. Okay, so now we have to figure out um, kind of some generalizations to make it easier on ourselves. So do you see when I have x, there's four types of trinomials. Do you see the middle term is positive and the other term or the constant is positive? Or we could have the middle term negative and um, the constant positive or negative, negative, positive, negative. So how does that change? The sign in the... Okay, so the sign in the middle is positive in both parentheses. When we have a middle term and the constant is positive, the sign in the middle is negative in both parentheses. Do you see? Negative, negative. So we get a mi minus 8 sum, but a positive 16 constant. So when we have both negatives here, middle term and that, that means one sign is negative and one is positive in order to get that. And what did we learn that has to happen in order to get a, a, a middle term of negative if they're opposite signs? The bigger factor would have to be negative then in order to, in the end, when you combine them to get a middle term of negative. And then here, if we know one has to be positive, one has to be negative, what happens to have the middle term positive, the bigger factor would have to be positive. So this is um, um, positive, negative. I could have done it the other way. It doesn't matter. Okay, so using this logic, we're going to put it all together now. So do you want to try these on your own? Okay, so I'm going to pause this and I'm going to get you to work through this and then we're going to go over this together, okay? Okay, who has an answer for number one for me? X plus two, X plus one, I agree. How about number two? X minus two, X minus one, I agree. Again, you can have this in any order. So you could have X minus one times X minus two, okay? How about number three? Very good. X plus 6, X minus 5. Back there, number 4. Somebody. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Number 5. Did you get it? Very good. Did everybody put an A in there? Because now it's not X anymore. That's the only way you get A squared is if they're A's, right? Okay, number six. How about over here? Um, How about you? Very good. M minus eight times M plus two. 
This one's now a T, right? So, um, very good. Was that one a hard one for people? No, it was easy because sometimes you forget that one and, and the number are factors. But if you start with it, it's, it's pretty easy to go. Okay, how about back there? You, yeah. X minus 5. X plus 2. Very good. Very good. Are we not all done here? Girls on the side here. Anybody have an answer for number 9? K plus 99. Very good. Okay, and last one. Pam? Very good. Okay, and then you see at the bottom it says here, uh, factoring is really important to pre-cal and calculus. So we have to get this skill down and we have to practice lots. So even if you think this is easy, there's always something that stumbles people. 